You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. It's one of my favorite songs from my youth because I can say four-speed dual-quad pause attraction 409. And that's because my boyfriend in high school was a was a, <laughs> a gearhead. gearhead. Okay. Yes, he was. Okay. And this is Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We're broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios, and we're brought to you by Extreme Exteriors. Let's hear now from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish maintenance contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all of your home and business maintenance needs. Call Start to Finish at 952 259 one two one nine for your home, for your business, for your peace of mind. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit caionline.org to learn more. That address again is caionline.org. CAI helps community association board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development networking opportunities, and a certification program that's established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit CAIMN.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at CAIMN.com and click on Membership. Jim, we've been talking about the state of Nevada and their Senate Bill 185. Um, Nevada keeps coming up with great stories for us because they keep coming up with new ideas to torture homeowners. They should they should change it to the state of confusion the instead state of, of confusion. the state of Nevada. So, so what else are they proposing in this Senate Bill 185? Yeah, um, if you were just uh, picking us up, we were talking about uh, two uh, items. One is this uh, commission. Uh, called the Common Interest, the Commission for Common Interest Communities, whose sole task is to just come up with what are acceptable fees and unacceptable fees for a homeowners association to charge. Uh, I, I guess they don't feel that you, the homeowner, along with your other neighbors, um, will have the best interests of one another in mind. Um, I, you know, they they don't understand, like you said, that this is. A nonprofit it's organization. It's already regulated as a nonprofit corporation. And if That's there's right. anything that I know about fees when it comes to a homeowners association, they want less of them. That's and, right. And one of the That's things right. that they require over and over again is that you, you put together a budget as a management company yep. and present it. And they say, we can't do it. We can't raise fees. We can't do this uh, to homeowners. Because we're talking to owners. The yes. board member are made up of, boards are made up of owners. And, and so they don't want to raise their own fees. And so for Nevada to think that uh, somehow they have the best interest is very paternalistic. You know, this Oh, it, it's, it's totalitarian. It, it, Forget it, it, paternalistic. It it gets to a point of becoming a nanny state where they're saying, We know what's better for you than you. You know what? It's it's such a it's such another death blow to homeowners associations who are already dealing with falling property values, uh-huh. foreclosures, yep. and and people just ignoring their responsibilities. Yeah. And, and then we talked about a second provision in Section Seventeen. Uh, homeowner associations have private streets. Uh, they need to uh, monitor uh, the the speed and control for safety uh, reasons in a homeowners association. Um, and so uh, there is the uh, homeowners who got the idea, well, we'll have a, a radar gun yep. because now it's not subjective anymore. It's objective. Sure. We can I measure it, it. And I can measure, and you were speeding. Yeah. It's not me saying, oh, there's... You're going too they're, fast. They're, yeah. they're driving around here like a bat out of hell. You know, <laughs> no, it is, it's going to be, yeah. you were 10 miles over an hour. Yeah. You're 25 yeah. miles over an hour. But they don't want to allow speed guns. But they don't want, and we don't know or why, but, but, they, but the legislature said... We know how to charge you, but you don't know how to uh, enforce violations with speeding. Section 18, this is so convoluted, I don't even know where I to begin. I can't even understand what it says. Yes, uh, it says an association could not prohibit a unit owner from requiring that owner to obtain the HOA's approval when it comes to renting or leasing units. Um, and then the... Uh, 
when you go on and read, there is discussion and language about uh, making sure that everything is done in plain language for communicating to homeowners. Uh, <laughs> Which so, is so ironic because the section itself is very difficult to understand. Could not prohibit from requiring. It, it, it's 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 so convoluted anyway. And now and but the ultimate point of this section is that association has to use plain English and I think it says something about bold faced yeah. type when communicating with its yeah oh, if, hey, you it's know it's not it's not enough just with its to, members to, to, not, not enough just to have plain language. Yeah. Now you off, also have to have it bold and in larger lettering. And how many times have we heard from someone don't write to me in bold face type because you are yelling at me. Oh I know we exactly. have all heard that. Hey, so we, now these states says we have to yell. We, at them. We've got uh, one uh, uh, person on line one right now. John, uh, good morning. You have a question? Uh, yes, I do. It's on amending the bylaws and documents. Okay. And what are the current uh, mandated government filing and registration fees for a 64 unit association? What are the filing, filing fees? for amendments? You're saying? Yeah, to register new amendments to your yeah. bylaws or government. It's documents. it's going to vary a little bit depending yeah, upon that's not a f- one, the uh, one county uh, where you yeah, are, no um, and and I don't know what the, they they yeah, are, I but know. I can tell you that it's probably going to run you somewhere between fifty to seventy five dollars per unit. Uh, okay. And uh, it's important, uh, and for our listeners, the uh, reason and why you're you're not just filing at once, you're filing this amended document. To all of the property, but that's if that... your deeds are torrents. That's if you have torrents. If it's an abstract deed, then you only have to file it once, that's and that's point. in your county. It 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 it's too complicated a question, I see. John, well, to I, answer once. And not the all of your I bring it up is because one resident was under the impression it could be up to a thousand dollars a unit. Uh, well, and they're probably confusing the cost of the amendment itself, you know, with the filing fees. Like, because okay. you usually have to have legal advice on amending your oh, yeah. documents. Yeah. So yeah, there could be the a non-legal fees. Yeah. 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 I, I guess I would call your county and ask. Okay. Okay. Thanks Thank for you. calling. Sure. Good question. Thank you. That was a good question. Well, let let's get back to uh, uh, Nevada here and some of the things that they're talking about. Uh, they're talking about uh, uh, fees that uh, they seem to be the only one to know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how to handle, uh, but this other one is they're saying they're basically saying in the section eighteen, HOAs you've got to be responsible to make sure that you're communicating in plain language, and the one thing that I find ironic about this, yeah, is read any state statute written by any state legislator, <laughs> and tell me. If plain language is used. Oh, my gosh. It's, I know. I agree. It's, it, it's really ironic. But here's another thing that's ironic. The homeowners associations are constantly trying to communicate with its members in the simplest terms possible. Yes, because their are. goal is to have everyone understand what's going on in the association. I stood in front of a judge in, I don't know if it was housing court in Scott County or if it's family court. I can't remember with a homeowner who had not paid assessments for many, 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 many months, and she said to the judge, well, I didn't know I owed the money because anything I get from New Concepts, I just throw in the trash. (laughs) You know what? I guess it wouldn't have mattered if I'd put that information in boldface type. Now would it? No, not if they're just uh, tossing it away. Yeah. But And so it's just uh, ironic. Here you have a legislature that's saying, we know better than you on what to charge. Um. We don't want you involved in uh, the actions uh, of uh, uh, monitoring um, rules and regulations because we don't think you can handle it. Yep. Number no one, three, no one else is going to help you keep your community number safe. Number three, get me if I'm not wrong, if I'm uh, incorrect here. Number three, they're saying uh, we don't think you know how to communicate, so we're going to <laughs> emphasize to you, you need to do things in common language. Do you understand? <laughs> Uh, and then there's more. Oh, that's, of course. That's not even, that's not even uh, yet. Uh, section 21 says only a majority. This is really funny. Only a majority of the board members must be owner occupants. Okay. So, so if you had five people on the board. Three uh, must be owner occupants. And uh-huh. supposedly that means versus an owner that doesn't live on the property. That's right. right? It would okay. be a, an investor. Okay. But this was changed 
from but last year at this time, <laughs> Nevada just went through and changed it and said uh, all board members must be owner occupant. So in 2010, they said uh, we've got to start this law. All owners must be occupants to be uh, owner occupants to be on the board of directors. Not even a year later, they're coming back and saying. Oh, uh, wait, uh, no, just a majority. Which seems to be going back to what it was in 2007. Yeah. But, it, but it, it begs the question, they can't even keep something straight, the legislature right. in Nevada, for one year, and all of a sudden it's such a hot topic that they have to change it? That's right. Automatically in less than a Perhaps year? Perhaps they should be soliciting people's opinions it gives before one, they draft the It gives one the pause. It gives one pause uh, wondering they what... Whether they know what they're talking about. Yeah. What we know that you do, folks, and we appreciate (laughs) you being uh, with us here this Sunday morning. We hope you have a great uh, Sunday and uh, look forward to seeing you again next Sunday right here on Where You Live with Gina Tony.